Corporate support for HBCUs has really galvanized over the last several months in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and racial unrest throughout the United States. Luckily, some of these corporations have stepped up in major ways, in major financial ways, to support historically black colleges and universities and their students. Dominion Energy, uh, based out of Virginia, is one of those companies with one of the largest gifts to HBCUs this year, more than $25 million in corporate support for campus expansion and scholarship for students. Also a $10 million uh, scholarship fund that HBCU students will be available to apply for in pursuit of their academic dreams. Joining us today to talk about this programming are executives from Dominion, Dominion Energy, Ed Bain, the president of Dominion, Dominion Energy in Virginia, and Carlos Brown, the senior vice president, general counsel, and chief compliance officer for the company. Good morning, gentlemen. I appreciate your time so much this morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, $25 million to 11 HBCUs in your service area. Uh, I think the major question is, well, we know it's a big deal. We know that the students and the campuses appreciate it in great measure. I think that a lot of folks would want to know, how does this kind of initiative get started? What is the conversation like in the executive brain trust, in working with the community, in identifying ways, specific ways that the money or the financial support can be best used to help? And we'll start with you, Ed, on that conversation because we know it's it's a top it's a top level conversation, but it takes a lot of influence from folks throughout the company, throughout the organization, throughout the community to say this is how you best make it work. Yeah. So I'll touch on a couple of points, and then uh, of course uh, Carlos can uh, add to it as well. But you know we've been on uh, a diversity journey for I would say at least fifteen years. I've been with the company uh, over twenty five years. I've been an executive with the company the past 11. And so uh, we have senior leaders who understand uh, why diversity and inclusion are important uh, from a business perspective, from a community perspective. And, uh, you know, the benefit, uh, one of the great benefits of that is uh, on the senior leadership team to have folks like Carlos and I uh, to be involved in those conversations and decision making. And so uh, as, as we saw, uh, the things that were happening uh, in the community and across the nation uh, this late spring and summer, uh, we just felt like that we needed to do more. We needed to take action. Uh, and, uh, you know, our CEO and others were very supportive of that. And so that's how, uh, you know, this support for HBCUs and the significant um, contribution uh, started. I started with conversations with uh, our CEO and Carlos and Darius and I and, and some others. So. Uh, we're very proud. Uh, we've been supporting HBCUs for the past 40 years, uh, but this is definitely the most significant uh, contribution that we've made. Yeah, I'll just add, I mean, it really is, it sounds like a colloquialism, but it starts at the top. Um, you know, in the weekend, I believe it was the, the weekend after uh, George Floyd's death, um, you know, our CEO, Tom Farrell, uh, texted. I mean, I was, I remember I was walking through Home Depot and uh, I got a text and it was Tom I was just checking in. And, um, and I think, uh, you know, Ed likewise had similar communications and, and we all knew that um, this, this was different and we need to do something different. And uh, I believe it was maybe um, that Monday morning, uh, Tom, uh, uh, asked for uh, Ed and Darius and myself to to gather with him, and he just said, "Look, I want to do something transformational, uh, something that is significant." And 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 although we're focused on the HBCU Promise, what we have to recognize is that we our first commitment this summer was a five million dollar commitment to support uh, social justice initiatives uh, writ large. And that was our first move, but but. But what Tom came to us and said after we made that announcement, he said, look, I want to do more. I, there's something I, I want to do something that's going to be transformational, that's going to be game changing because this, these struggles have persisted too long. And we can do more uh, as a leader in our community, uh, especially a, a company of our nature where we are a public service entity. We have to do more to take a stand to, to, to try to change uh, this, this dynamic. And he put, you know, the three of us together um, to say, look, let's 
come up with something. But I will say Tom was the initially the one who said, let's focus on HBCUs. We had a long standing relationship with Virginia Union uniquely, but it goes, but Hampton uh, as well, and Virginia State. But we had a long standing relationship where uh, Virginia Union president had been on our board of directors uh, going back into the early 80s, I think maybe even the early 70s, uh, a, a series of them. Um, and uh, and Tom was very aware of that. And, and we have maintained that our, our chief operating officer, Diane Leopold, currently serves on their board. Uh, their former board chair was our lead director uh, at that <coughs> point. And so we had this long relationship. And so Tom said, look, I'm thinking HBCUs, but I want you guys to, to work on this. And uh, it was one of the greatest privileges of my career to be able to work on this initiative with Ed and Darius and several others. We were able to pull in folks from across the footprint, across the company to really hone in on what schools we wanted to focus on and, and have a rationale, right? Why these 11 versus others? I know that there are a lot of great HBCUs all across the country that are doing great work and that we admire and appreciate, but we wanted there to be a nexus between our company, uh, and those institutions, either because of our alumni base, I mean, meet, I mean, our employee base, where, you know, the alumnus of those schools, but where have we recruited uh, and or uh, where do we want to recruit, right? Where do we want to go and get talent to improve our uh, our workforce diversity and just to make us the, the most competitive and sustainable energy company in the country? So all those things were factors. I'm glad you said that because it brings up a point I want to talk about the energy industry. Um, has really, really tight connections with a variety of workforce development initiatives. You can you can be a lineman and that's technical training. You can get great training for that at a community college, or you can go and become a senior vice president and general counsel or president of an energy company. And that requires more of the traditional liberal arts education. When you think about the ways that you guys looked at the institutions with whom you wanted to partner, are there specific, I know you mentioned alumni, so obviously there, there are people involved. But what are some of the, I guess, the programmatic things that you look for in an educational partner that presented themselves as ideal for this particular initiative for HBCUs? Yeah, so, I mean, you're exactly right. There's a uh, very diverse uh, set of skills uh, and educational needs that uh, an energy company has. And that's continuing to evolve as as we move to a, a you know cleaner energy grid, a more modern energy grid, uh, those um, skills that we need um, continue to evolve from what they may have been 25 years ago to what they are now. Now, do we still need linemen? Do we still need engineers? Do we still need accountants? All those things are absolutely right. And so, uh, as Carlos mentioned, um, as we thought about the relationships uh, that we had on a number of different spectrums, we wanted to make sure that we deepen those. And so we'll give uh, a few examples. Carlos talked about uh, the Virginia Union uh, relationship, but uh, we also have uh, Virginia State who sits right uh, down the road from us. And uh, we work very closely with their business school and we work very closely with their engineering school. And so uh, very targeted uh, in, in those areas. Uh, North Carolina A&T, they were uh, the only school uh, that we uh, included from uh, North Carolina. We have a smaller uh, service uh, territory footprint there um, and employee base. But North Carolina A&T is a place that uh, we've historically had a very strong relationship with and uh, quite a few employees that are there. And I mean, let's face it, if you want to go get minority engineers, North Carolina A&T is one of the best places to go in the country. And so uh, our um, investment there is very targeted to the engineering school. And so if you look at the states uh, that uh, we donated to in the schools, it was based on where do we operate and uh, strengthening those relationships from a workforce perspective and alumni perspective. When you guys personally think about the investment of HBCUs and you you guys were both educated in Virginia, Virginia Tech, University of Virginia, respectively. Uh, but like a lot of folks there, they they have at least a passing knowledge of HBCUs. Some of us, even though who didn't graduate from HBCUs, have family, friends who graduated from HBCUs. Can you guys talk about you your your personal investment and your personal knowledge base? Uh, Carlos, I'll start with you that makes it that much more of a palatable partnership to you and more passionate for you. 
Well, yeah, that, that's a great question. So, you know, I was able to share where one of the things we did is we, we actually did a panel and we met with each of the universities and, and, and uh, their leadership and talked about the grant program. And one of the things I was able to share with when we talked to Norfolk State was that in my family, uh, I'm from southeastern Virginia, Ches Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. uh, every person in my family that had gone to college, um, with the exception of my one aunt who went to the University of Virginia in, in the late 70s, uh, had gone to Norfolk State. And so essentially, um, I am the product of, uh, of an HBCU. Uh, my, you know, aunts and uncles, cousins, uh, the reason I knew about college, the, re the people that came home and talked to me about um, some of the things they don't teach you in, in grade school were my aunts and uncles that went to Norfolk State. And so I clearly stand on the shoulders of that HBCU legacy. And um, again, it was a great pride for me to uh, to be involved in an effort to support those schools that were so instrumental in, in creating an, an educational and socioeconomic opportunity for um, for people like me and, and Ed who were able to go to, to other institutions. The other thing I'll add is that you know we do have the additional ten million dollars that that is 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 a scholarship fund. Part of the rationale for that uh, was that for generations, because of de jure discrimination, um, uh, African-American students were not able to attend PWIs. And when we looked at our alumni base, what we discovered was that right now, right, we are recruiting, uh, you know, the majority of our uh, uh, African-American employees at Dominion actually have come to uh, attend it, uh, you know, uh, non-HBCUs. And so we said we want to make sure we're providing some resource for 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 those African American students under underrepresented minority populations to gain access to the techs and UVA's and the Harvards and the the you know VCU's and the you know North South University of South Carolinas as well. And so that's part of why we did that separate scholarship fund was because we recognize that uh, that there's a large population of our students. Uh, or our employees who attend those other institutions, uh, and that's and that's okay because that's part of what our ancestors fought for, right? Is that opportunity to have equal access to all the opportunities. And so, if you're blessed to attend an HBCU, and that's that's great. But if you don't attend an HBCU, we want to support you in that effort too. But the the issue, the issue was how do we uh, help provide an educational opportunity ladder for uh, diverse students, especially African Americans. Hey, Jared, let me add to that. If not, I'll get into trouble. Um, so, you know, I was first generation, uh, my sister and I are first generation college kids out of our family. So I'm not really any legacy there. Uh, but my wife uh, went to St. Paul. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got to live that uh, HBCU experience through my wife, but also uh, through her family. Her dad went to St. Paul's, her uncles went to Virginia State. And so, uh, on my in-laws, very deep roots uh, from an HBCU perspective, and and just having the conversations, and uh, you know, going and having those experiences, just know uh, the rich history there, the product uh, that HBCUs put out, and and it's how it's so critical to our communities, and you know, to our company going forward. And, and that's a critical point, man, because actually, what you guys are doing. It, it in in no small measure is making sure that another HBCU in Virginia doesn't wind up like St. Paul. Exactly. That they, that they aren't disappearing. It's particularly with funds that go to expand the campus, that support tuition, which powers a lot of these campuses. So it's an amazing thing. And I will get you guys out of here on this last question. You had a 40 year relationship with black colleges in the state, 40 years of, of relationship with HBCUs in your service territory, 40 years of relationship with customers all throughout this region. Are, are there ways that you think about this expands? How do we do more? As as Carlos said, you know, we think about how do we do something more? The key word transformational. How do you even get more transformational than this? Because this is a pretty substantive thing. Or is it that you maintain at a very high level? Yeah, I'll, I'll just speak briefly. I'll let uh, Carlos uh, finish this out. Um, I believe that through these investments, HBCUs and the students will demonstrate how you leverage these things for the good of not only HBCUs and the students, but the companies and the communities uh, as we go forward. 
And so I think uh, not only for us, but other companies who've chosen to do the same thing, they will see tremendous value, exponential returns, and they will want to do more. I firmly believe that. And so I don't, I don't believe it's a, a maintain or this is over or go back to what you're doing. I believe folks will see, our company will see, we will see that these investments are truly critical for our success, our community success, our nation's success going forward. Yeah, I'll just uh, just you know echo that. And, and one of the things that we looked at when we did this, because we, you know, when we went in with our ask and because uh, Tom didn't give us parameters, so so we shot for the moon. <laughs> and we we thought, well, hey, maybe he gives us half. <laughs> right? no. mm -hmm. Um, but we also we show the economic impact that's right of HBCUs, right? I mean, HBCUs are typically some of the largest employers of African Americans. HBCUs not only help lift uh, their students out of you know uh, uh, poverty or low wealth communities, but it also helps lift communities because it provides jobs and, and other educations. And so, and then they become customers, right? Of, of, of Dominion Energy, uh, of, you know, Dominion Energy, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, what have you. So we believe it, this is just, we are doing well by doing good and that this will yield benefits for us from a workforce development perspective and diversifying our workforce from creating economic activity within our regions to creating centers of excellence one of the things we're looking at doing is partnering with norfolk state and hampton and virginia state to develop a clean energy sustainability center as we look at you know greening our business and, and so forth so and leveraging all those talents um so we're thrilled and, and i think that it was one of the universities i think a and t uh, that, that that quickly realized that there's opportunities for us to deepen this relationship, right? <laughs> that, you know, we, we, we're we fortunate that it was announced that we're going to be uh, the name sponsor of their, uh, in their air building of their laboratory floor. Uh, but they're like, you know, the building's available, <laughs> right? So, so, <laughs> so, so they gave, created an opportunity for us to come back. And we're excited. I mean, the, the entire company is excited about this. Um, it, we've had employees who've been employees for 40, 50 years. We've had alumni uh, retirees call back and say that this was one of their proudest moments in the company's history and so um i think everyone believes that this is something that we want to grow and, and go deeper into well brothers i gotta say this is this is an amazing you know i've been doing this for more than 10 years and this is one of the first conversations where i've had where executives have really drilled down to the elements of HBCU support, where you're talking about engagement with employees who are alumni, where you're talking about educational access, and you guys get it. Um, and I think that that people nationwide, when they watch this, they will see that Dominion Energy uh, truly is a corporate example, not just how you can you can provide support for HBCUs, but how to how to get it, how to think about it. And so I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. If we want, if people wanted to support dominion energy's efforts on behalf of hbcus and your other philanthropic support uh, measures because you do more than just education you do more than just hbcus how can folks learn more about that learn more about dominion energy and a lot of his corporate outreach effort well we have our sustainability report that we have published on our website that has uh, more information than anyone could ever want on uh, what we do in this space uh, and so checking that out we'll let you, you know we spend over 40 million dollars a year or I said we invest more than $40 million a year in our communities through various philanthropic efforts. And this is over and above that, by the way, just, just so you know, this is not a part of that. This is over and above that, that initiative at this point. Um, and uh, if they want to support, what I would say, just send them a note or a letter to, uh, you know, call the call, call the contact center and just say, hey, I just want to pass along how much we appreciate uh, what Dominion Energy is doing. We share that information with our board. We share it with our shareholders, uh, and it and it encourages. Uh, it's it supports the initiative that the work that that folks like Tom and Carter and uh, Jim Chapman and Ed and others are doing to uh, to help us be transformative in this effort. So that's how they support Dominion Energy. They want to support HBCUs. Go give the HBCUs and encourage their companies to do the same. Yes, sir. Yep. Yes, sir. We appreciate you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you.